this time on the old violin. But he held it up with a smile. What am I bid, good people? He cried. Who starts the bidding for me? One dollar. One dollar. Do I hear two? Two dollars. Who makes it three? Three dollars once. Three dollars twice. Going for three, but no. From the room far back, a gray-bearded man came forward and picked up the bow. Then wiping the dust from the old violin and tightening up its strings, he played a melody pure and sweet, as sweet as the angel sings. The music ceased and the auctioneer, in a voice that was quiet and low, said, what now am I bid for this old violin, as he held it aloft with its bow? One thousand, one thousand, do I hear two? Two thousand, who makes it three? Three thousand once, three thousand twice, going and gone, said he. The audience cheered, but some of them cried, we just don't understand. What changed its worth? Swift came the reply, the touch of the master's hand. And many a man with life out of tune, all battered and bruised with hardship, is auctioned cheap to a thoughtless crowd, just like that old violin. A mess of pottage a glass of wine, a drink, and he travels on. He is going once. He is going twice. He is going and almost gone. But the master comes, and the foolish crowd can never quite understand the worth of a soul and the change that is wrought by the touch of the master's hand. Are you here today with a life out of tune? Maybe after this year you're battered and bruised. Or maybe you just feel like that old relic of a violin ready to be auctioned cheap. Well the master in that poem saw that violin knew its value, and played it with love. Jesus is our master. He sees the real you. He loves you. And he lists your worth at priceless. Look to Jesus for your real, true identity. Imagine today that God is stepping up to the violin of your life, picking up the bow, and beginning to play. Listen carefully. Hear the truth of your identity in the music of love, God's love. On the front of your bulletin today is John 3.16. I would like you to say that with me. For God so loved the world that it gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The author of this gospel also recorded in his letter, this is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. 1 John 4, 9 and 10. John saw in Christ the manifestation of God's love. The hidden nature of God was revealed and was open to experience. In Jesus, we see not just one characteristic of God, but the whole of God as one who loves. 
God closed the separation between himself and sinful humanity by his mercy. This is love in action for the salvation of the world. This love isn't temporary, and it can't be taken away. Paul writes in his letter to the Roman church, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither life nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 8, 38 and 39. What assurance. I don't know about you, but I need that. Because we never know when life will throw something unexpected and quite overwhelming our way. I once knew a lady who was so looking forward to the weekend that was coming because she and her husband were going to be going to their daughter's college to visit her. They had a great time together as a family. Everything went according to plan. And then when they arrived home, her husband looked at her and said, I do not love you anymore. I am filing for a divorce, and the house will be on the market in the morning. She was devastated. God's love isn't here today and gone tomorrow. His love is unending. It nourishes and sustains his people. And it provides a firm foundation that doesn't waver when life throws us a big curve. That's why Paul prays in his letter to the Ephesian church. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Ephesians 3, 16 to 19. Put your roots deep today in his love for you. Abide in it and allow it to fill you. Are you listening? As the master is playing with love for you. Hear the truth of your identity in the music of value. I come out of the business world and in business people like to climb the corporate ladder hoping that financial success or a position will help them to feel respected, appreciated. Some search for significance in a title or a corporate office in the corner, the corner is important, or in a lengthy career. Others think that the street they live on or how many likes they get on a social media post will somehow make them somebody. On the other hand, I have also noticed, and this seems to be a female thing, that many ladies apologize for everything. And I do mean everything. Sadly, given the opportunity, I think they would apologize for being here on earth. And that, to me, is a sure sign of low self-worth. I hope that's not true of anybody here today or online. But just in case, count the number of times you say sorry in a day. If it's for the right reason, great, keep at it. But otherwise, please stop apologizing. Too many people have lost or maybe never knew their true identity. 
They struggle to answer the question, who am I? Now, if you would have asked me that a few years ago, what, who are you? I would have given you my resume. I was John's wife. I was an insurance agent. And then life threw me a curve. Nine years ago, my husband was diagnosed with cancer and passed away 10 short months later. Two and a half years ago, the spirit whispered in my ear, Shelley, another change is coming. And I handed in my resignation on a 30-year career. What then? Who was I? Was I no longer valued? Too often we've heard stories of retirees who pass away shortly after their retirement because their entire being was wrapped up in their work. Or we've heard of the person who feels worthless because they were just unexpectedly terminated from their job. Now certainly I'm not making light of those situations. They are traumatic. Maybe if we look at what Paul has to say about his resume, that will help to clarify. Philippians 3, 5 through 8. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, in regard to the law, a Pharisee, as for zeal, persecuting the church, as for righteousness based on the law, faultless. But whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage, all of that garbage, that I may gain Christ. If there was anybody sold out to his career, it was Paul. And his resume was full of his accomplishments. But he threw it all out for the worth of knowing Christ Jesus. This isn't head knowledge only. It's the kind that comes with personal experience. It's the difference between reading about a destination and actually going on a trip there. Or the kind of knowing that a husband and wife has after they've been married for a number of years. Or that of a parent and child. It's more intimate. Well, God wants us to know him and the love he has for us. He communicated clearly that he values the world, you and me, so highly. He sent his best, his son. He sent Jesus to pay the costly price for our redemption. He wants us a relationship with us now and forever. Now, some of you may be thinking, Shelley, I've known this for years. Heard it before, it's pretty basic. But I have found too few people who have heard the message that God values them as they are, who believe it at a deep level. Head knowledge has not reached the level of experience that transforms their lives. That's why being reminded that our identity is only found in the suffering, death, and resurrection of Jesus, that's so important. He gave all so that we would have all. Ladies and gentlemen, there is just no way to express the treasure that you are to him. Now you may be currently going through a season where you've been a little distracted and you're finding your value in your material possessions, in your family, or something else. 
Paul charges you to do what he did. Throw out that resume and go back to the cross. Your worth is found in Jesus alone. The more intimately you know him, I guarantee you, the more he delights in showing you just how valued you are. Then when the time comes that you feel underappreciated by those around you, your real identity connected to Jesus will not waver. Are you listening? The music of the master has swelled with the fullness and love of love and value that God has bestowed on all of us. And there's more. Hear the truth of your identity in the music of acceptance. John 1, 12. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children of God. Have you ever seen a musician with their instrument? It's almost comical. My cousin is a professional musician. She plays the trumpet. And she carries around her trumpets, several of them, in this solid, thick case. Now, just to be sure that you don't accidentally trip over it or bump into it, that case is fluorescent yellow. She's a classical musician. So if somehow you are intent on doing harm to her trumpets, her very precious cargo, you might think twice when you see the sticker that says, Bach off. <laughs> These instruments are treated with love. They're so important to her and are well cared for. If this is how a musician cares for her instruments, how much more does God care for you and for me, his child? He not only cares, he makes us heirs. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you receive brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs. Heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory, Romans 8, 14 to 17. The spirit in us gives us the sense of intimacy which the apostle Paul desired more than all and which is ours as well. God doesn't just call us his children. He lavishes his love on us. And there we are, right back to where we started with God's love. 1 John 3, 1 and 2. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known, but we will know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. John speaks urgently because he wants us to know that the relationship between God the Father and us, his children, is ours to have in all fullness. It is a gift. Accept God's love, the priceless value he places on you, and enjoy daily the relationship with God that nothing and no one can take away. 
Every musical composition that is a sonata, called a sonata has a structure. It's called sonata form. Otherwise, it's not a sonata. God's love has a shape too. It looks like the cross, where love became action and was poured out for you and for me in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. As Gerald May wrote, this love is meant to flow for all people and all creation. This is our true human nature. It is who we are. If a composer were to leave a sonata in the drawer, never to be played, the music world would lack something. Likewise, if what Jesus did for us does not cause us to embrace the truth of our identity, such that we want to share ourselves and the message of his love with others through our words and our actions, then the people we come in contact with may not have the opportunity to hear about a relationship with Jesus and about who they truly are. Loved, valued, accepted. Look to Jesus for your true identity. The music has ceased. The touch of the master's hand transforms our brokenness into wholeness, heals our bruises, and puts our lives back in tune. Any old relics have been revitalized and are ready to put forth sweet melodies. You have been touched by the master's hand. You belong. And you are loved by God. It's shown in the cross of Christ. Now, share the real you and tell the story of Jesus to someone even today. Let us pray. Oh Lord God, we are so thankful that we don't have to find our worth and our identity anywhere but in you. Thank you for your love. And thank you for that demonstration of your love on the cross of Jesus Christ. For it is in his name that we pray. Amen.